Today, St. Louis County settled a discrimination lawsuit with Lieutenant Keith Wildhaber. Uh, this lawsuit acknowledges what uh, Lieutenant Wildhaber survived in the police department and lets us move forward as a county. I think it's important to recognize that this sends a message to everyone in county government and to all of our employers in the St. Louis region that discrimination will not be tolerated, discrimination of any type, including discrimination based on sexual orientation. This lawsuit has been settled for $10.25 million, which is substantially less than the $20 million judgment by the jury, and substantially less than up to $22 million, which is what it could have cost us during an 18-month appeal with interest penalties and legal fees. I think it's important to recognize that this settlement will be paid through general revenue, through a mechanism that we can bond and limit the present day impact to our budget and maintain our normal operations of county government. In addition, I've instructed our administrative staff to not pay for this settlement through Proposition P funds. Proposition P is a voter approved public safety sales tax that is for public safety. Discrimination, unfortunately, for many years has been pervasive in our culture and it is not unique to the police department and is not uh, an appropriate use of our public safety sales tax. I think it's important to recognize that this is an opportunity for our department to move forward and to continue to make the progress that has been made and to stay focused on my three goals for our police department, which is first, to keep us safe and second, to respect all people. That means we, our patrol officers, respect the citizens during their movement in the community. That means our command staff and leadership respect all officers during the promotion process. And it also means that our citizens respect the life-saving work that's provided by our police officers who protect us every day. This is also when we recognize that our police department has to adapt. It has to adapt to new policies and best practices. It has to adapt to the latest strategies. It has to adapt to new technology, which includes police cameras, which are now available on every police officer and in every police car. And we also have to adapt to new tactics, and our police department is constantly training to make sure that they are well prepared to keep us safe. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. Was the chief's retirement part of the settlement? No, the chief's retirement was not part of the settlement. How much do you think that played into the settlement, uh, having the chief retire? What, what, where's, the, where's the connection? Well, the chief had confided to me even before I became county executive that he would consider retiring in 2020. So I think this has always been in his mind. Um, the settlement, um, has really, the framework has really been um, agreed to now for some time, for the past um, week or so or more, we've been working on the paperwork and we're under a confidentiality agreement. But I believe that the chief wanted to make sure that we moved forward and got this, the department on the right track after this settlement. Um, he uh, promoted Lieutenant Wildhaber. He created the Diversity and Inclusion Unit and he put Lieutenant Wildhaber in charge of that. And I think that's uh, one of the things that the chief wanted to do before he left. And he also wanted to make sure that um, the uh, police cameras were implemented on all police officers, which happened uh, the 1st of January. And he wanted to make sure all police cars had a dash cam. How important do you think it was for, uh, as you say, for the department to move forward? How important do you think that was to have happened without Belmar at the head of the department? Well, the department already started moving forward. I, uh, prom I uh, appointed four new members of the police board several months ago. They've already uh, been in place. They've already started implementing new policies and procedures. And uh, uh, Chief Belmar was part of that transition. Bonding means taking on debt with the full life of the bonds. That's How right. much is that going to be? So the settlement amount is 10.75. Well, I would uh, refer you to the Department of Administration and some of the paperwork that's been provided. We're looking at bonds between 10 and 30 years. And once we uh, 
receive our reimbursement from the uh, insurance claims and we'll be able to pay those bonds off early. If the police department or PROP is not paying for this, then who, who is? What well, departments are paying for this? Well, this comes out of general revenue, which is uh, both uh, sales tax and property tax. But that money would have gone somewhere else. No, it's in our reserve. So when we bond this over several years, the impact on the budget will be minimal, um, you know, five or $600,000 range. How big of a, given you said that, how big of a hit will this be for the county to have to pay for this? I understand the bonding issue. But well, that, uh, again, that's a, the settlement is for $10.2 million. If we bond that over time, it certainly will be slightly more than that, and I would refer you to the Department of Administration for that exact number. Again, you've had to make cuts every year to get the reserves in, in right. condition, so it's, it's literally got to be coming from somewhere other than reserves. I appreciate that question, Jeremy. I know you're very familiar with the budget, but we have uh, you know, $35 million in general revenue, in reserves. We have supplemental appropriations throughout the year. Um, we have um, several million dollars, uh, sometimes tens of million dollars that are reserved, that are returned at the end of the year that are unspent because departments don't spend all of their budget or positions are left open. But we believe we can bond this over 10 to 30 years. We're currently looking at that right now. And the impact on the county budget will be between five and six hundred thousand dollars per year over time. And then once we receive our insurance payment, then the impact will be less than that. Have to approve this? The, the council have to approve which part? The council well, does have so to approve the bonding, okay. and uh, based on the feedback that I've had from them as individuals, I think everyone um, is agreeable that we should minimize the impact uh, of this settlement um, on any one year's budget. In general, uh, county executive, what's your thought on the? I know you put out the statement earlier today. What's your thought on the retirement of, of Chief Belmar? Was this the right time for him to move on? Your big picture here on, on what that means for the county police. Well, I think you have to recognize that six years is a long time to be chief. It's about as long as anyone's ever been chief in St. Louis County, mm -hmm. and he's been comp contemplating this for some time. Um, I think he had some milestones that he wanted to reach. He wanted to get the police cameras in place. He wanted to get the department pointed in the proper direction after this settlement. And um, I'm sure when he uh, does his interviews about his retirement in due time, he'll talk about all those things. Uh, how important was it for you to get a settlement reached on the Wild Hill? Well, I think it's really important for those of us in St. Louis County to recognize this is a tough time for the county, but we have to recognize that discrimination isn't right. And by settling this lawsuit, the county recognizes that what Lieutenant Wildhaber went through was, was not right. We recognized the jury verdict. We heard what they had to say, and uh, we're moving forward. In addition to monetary payments, are there any policy changes or other mandates as part of the settlement for the department? No, there's nothing the mandated in the settlement, but we're very quickly doing a deep review of the department. Um, the police board is um, right now preparing an RFP to put out to have a review of the department and um, an assessment of any changes that need to be placed to reach our diversity and inclusion goals. In the meantime, Chief Belmar has, re has created a diversity and inclusion unit and asked Lieutenant Wildhaber to lead that unit, and he's been very busy working with my staff in uh, my own diversity, equity, and inclusion unit. And I know they've been meeting, they've been talking about policies, and they've been talking about uh, training for the police officers. What will the process be going forward on picking a new chief, like an interim chief for the time being? Where, right. where does that go? Well, the, by the charter, the chief is selected by the police board, and they'll start that process. This is something they've done many times over the years, and um, I'm sure they'll um, look internally. There are qualified and experienced candidates within the police department, and <coughs> I expect the police board to start talking about the process. They have a meeting in a week or so, and I'm sure that'll be on their agenda. When you say that they're qualified and experienced within the department, would you want to see a chief from within the department even if it isn't required? It's not required. I think that historically in St. Louis County, the chief has come from within the department. I believe we have many qualified candidates within the department, and um, I would imagine that's where the police commission will look. But again, that's their decision. Is the chief expected to get any, any additional payouts after he leaves? Um, there's no special arrangement, but everyone who retires 
has some accrued vacation. I don't know what that will be, but um, there was no uh, special agreement. It's a normal retirement. Just to be clear, he's he him retiring was not specifically part of the settlement. No, and I would encourage you, and I recognize the question, and I appreciate um, you know how that will how that uh, folks would like to connect those two things. But I would encourage you to read through the settlement documents. Those will be filed in court tomorrow, and see for yourself. And there's no insurance coverage, or you just don't know yet. No, we have insurance in force, and the insurance policies and the agreements with a third-party administrator, including the timeline of this case over the past two years is in the supporting documents that we've provided. The um, um, Department of Administration filed a notice with the third-party administrator in 2017 uh, within 10 days of receiving notice of the suit, and that's the normal process, and that's how our insurance and third-party administrator contracts work, and that happened all two years before I became county executive. So there's a chance that you might not have them all recovered. I mean, there won't be any. Well, I would encourage you to look at the insurance policies. We have a $2 million deductible. Yeah. But again, we'll work through this. I mean, I think we all recognize that any insurance carrier, liability insurance, health insurance, homeowner's insurance, or automobile insurance will always hesitate when it's time to pay. And the bigger the number, the more they'll hesitate and review. Our case is very solid. Our agreements are strong, and this is a normal process that we go through. Sometimes it takes time, um, and we're prepared to pursue that, and we'll, we'll pursue it as much as we need to or as little as we need to, but we do have insurance in place. So previously we reported that no more than 40% of the self-insurance fund could be used, which was like $6 million, so it was like $2.5 million could be used from the self-insurance fund. Uh, we have and funds within insurance. county government to cover this. Um, with, and, and even with bonding, it makes it much easier. But we will cover this payment. It will have uh, a minimal direct impact to the annual operating budget of the county, and we're ready to move forward. So how much would be bonded? Well, we'll bond the entire settlement. So then why wouldn't you pay out of the insurance fund that you have set up? Because we would like to keep that insurance fund in place, and whenever you, uh, whenever you issue a bond, that it's uh, reasonable to at some point the expense of the bond is significant and generally when you issue a bond you, you generally try to bond for about ten million dollars again these are detailed questions and I would have to refer you to the Department of Administration but um, you know these are tight budget times and if we don't have to uh, take the hit on our budget until the insurance uh, payment comes through we think this is the way to do it any other questions you came all the way down here. Tim, in, in, in layman's terms, for people who might not understand this, what's the best way to explain this? Do you pay out the money from the general fund to then replenish it through insurance reimbursements or bonding, or can you kind of go through just, you know, Well, sure. Um, you know, it depends on how fast it takes to issue the bonds. That usually takes a couple of months. We, we, I, I believe that um, we'll be making a payment within 60 days or so. And um, if we need to, we'll make the first payment out of the insurance fund and then pay it back through bonding. But again, those are details I would have to refer you to the Department of Administration. Uh, but I think the, the bottom line is we have a plan. We recognize our liability. We've settled this discrimination lawsuit, which is, um, was wrong, and we're ready to move forward. When will you find out from the insurance company that it's just a yes or no? These things take time, Jeremy. I don't know. I would have to refer you to our legal department. Again, um, this is a big number, and it will take some time to sort out. We believe that our position is very strong, and I would encourage you to read the documents that we provided. We also have copies of the settlement agreement, so we can 